In this video, I wanna show you how you can handle multiple dates in Power BI. So showing them in the same axis um, using the use relationship DAX function. So what do I mean by the multiple dates? So let me show you what I mean on my screen here. So I have a Power BI desktop file here with a, an employees table, which has some basic information about uh, different employees, their start dates and end dates, uh, as well as some other details like their employment type, region and area and things like that. Uh, but what I want you to pay attention with is their start dates and end dates. So we have them as separate fields here and we want to show this uh, in a line chart to show the number of starters and the number of levers on the end date. So to do that, uh, let's start with um, the start date. So in the data model itself, I've set up some, uh, some just organization stuff here. We have the DAX uh, grouping. It's just to organize all of our DAX functions over there. And we also generated a date table to use as our kind of central date table for this data model. If you haven't done it yet, uh, I've covered in a video in the past why you need a date table and how to generate one. So I'm not going to go through how to create this uh, here, uh, but if you're interested in that topic, go check that video out. So typically what you would want to do is to uh, see the starters. You would want to bring in the start dates and the ID and you would put this in a line chart so simple right uh, let's see here so if I drag it here and let's put the ID as count of IDs so this gives you the number of starters uh, every single day uh, because of the start date um, for the duration of whatever the data we have but the problem with this is, first of all, it doesn't, sh it isn't able to show you any different dimensions. So for example, if you want to see by month or by year, you aren't able to, to display that uh, because you're only using the start date, date uh, field. Uh, so what you would normally do is you would go to, you would want to use the date table. So that's what we'd set it up for. So what you would do is you would go to your model and you would drag the date table on the date, uh, the date field on the date table onto the start date on the employees table. So you'll see that creates a one-to-many relationship between those two tables. Uh, it's an active relationship. So what that means is that now we can use the, the date column in the uh, the, date, the date field in the date table as our axis. So you'll see it doesn't really make any difference right now. But where the beauty comes is, for example, if you want to see it by year, you can also do that now. And if you wanted to see by month or year by month, you, you're able to use those different dimensions um, in the date table. So that's perfect. But now you'll see the problem is when you want to now show um, the number of levers in the same axis. So the only way to do that would be to uh, create a new, um, I would, so if we try to do what we were doing earlier, so if we, so, because we, what we need is the end date field. If we go to our relationships, let's go to the dates table um, we want to drag the date to the end date what that does is it creates another relationship between the date and the end date but you will see that it's an inactive relationship you can see it by the dotted um, relationship uh, on this view and what that means is that this relationship follows primarily this first relationship that we made um, so when you visualize uh, the, num the, the count of IDs uh, by a certain date, it will follow the start date on this relationship. So you won't be able to uh, use the levers uh, that way. 
So this is where the user relationship DAX comes in, right? So you, you're able to uh, dynamically switch between uh, different relationships uh, uh, to, so that you can use that relationship and do your counts without having to uh, deal with the model itself. So all you need to do is just make sure you have the, uh, the relationship set up, even if it's inactive. Uh, and then we'll use the use relationship DAX uh, function. So let me show you how you can do that. So let's go back to our uh, report view. Let's create a new DAX measure. Let's name it levers equals. Um, we'll use calculate because this is where we'll, we'll be able to uh, add more expressions or filters into uh, our calculations because what we want to do is count the number of employees right um, however what we want to then add with this as a filter is to use the relationship that we have inactive at the moment so we want to count the number of levers uh, so what we want to do is is um, is activate the relationship um, so we've set it up before already it's just inactive for us to activate that for this specific uh, DAX calculation we will need to just reference a couple of things in there so first, uh, on the date table side, we need to say what we want to connect to. So it's the date field in the date table. And then on the employee side, what we want to connect is the end date. So let's close that and let's close the calculate. And yeah, that's, that's it. So once that's done, let's drag that into our view. And you'll see that it now shows us the number of levers on top of in the same axis uh, as the starters. So um, you can use them in the same axis without uh, any consequences. Um, and, and it's that easy pretty much. Uh, one couple of, couple of tips that I want to give you here. So for example, you'll see that you, we don't have levers uh, before the the January 2018 that's because um, when I set this up I we don't we you know we don't have any levers for those periods but if there are no levers your calculation just shows nothing because it doesn't calculate anything so what I would give you as a tip is uh, to do a plus zero at the end of your calculations that way even if there is no result you will always get zero regardless so you'll see you have the zeros uh, showing up, uh, zero levers on those months uh, instead of blank. So you'll see, there, you, you'll see there's a weird thing where it's showing uh, blank levers, but that's because you have people that don't have levers, right? So if you don't want to show that, you can just filter them out on the filter. So if you do like here where uh, not blank, yeah and there you have it so so that's that's pretty simple so i hope that helped you um understand how you can deal with multiple date tables in power bi it's, it's quite a powerful uh, way for you to be able to visualize your um your reports so yeah i, ho I hope that helped uh, if you like this video and you enjoy this format, let me know in the comments section below. I really, really appreciate uh, any comments that you guys give. Get in touch with me using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thanks so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.